What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Haunted Beard. My name is Jake. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are continuing our franchise series of reviews for Final Destination. Today I'm going to be reviewing Final Destination 2. This came out in 2003, but as far as the events within the movie go, they pick up a year after the events of the first film. And the setup here is pretty much the exact same as the first film, only this time it follows a new cast of characters as they have to continue to avoid and escape death in its pursuit of them to kill them in ridiculously elaborate and creative ways. And the opening of Final Destination 2 is much like the first film. And, of course, we get some very obvious and on-the-nose foreshadowing. The film opens up and we're hearing this interview on this news segment that this guy talking to what is kind of perceived to be as a sort of conspiracy theorist nut job as he's saying that death is actually after everybody, but of course he's right. Because in the end, no one can escape death. And today may be your day to die. And then we get introduced to the new main character, Kimberly, and she's going on this trip with her friends. And they're driving down the highway, and of course Highway to Hell comes on the radio, and she looks into a car next to her, and there's a kid there playing with his cars, and he's crashing them together. Again, some very obvious foreshadowing. But then we get the opening crash sequence. And I've got to say, this sequence, even though it is now 20 years old, I think it still holds up quite well, and it's a lot of fun. <gasps> this scene is just insane. It's crazy. It has got explosions like mad car crashes, grinding metal, cars flipping all over the place. And yeah, the logs you can tell a little bit are CGI, but it doesn't really take away all that much from the overall impact of it. And I think it's just a really well shot and well directed scene, and it's just a whole lot of fun. Then we find out, much like the first film, this whole opening sequence is just a premonition of Kimberly and she ends up stalling traffic and saving a bunch of people's lives because, of course, the accident really happens. But she freaks out because she sees a premonition of it, and so her and the people who she saved, they end up in the police station giving their testimony. And so these are kind of the new cast of characters, and like I said, it's pretty much the exact same setup, only this time they're not her friends, they're complete strangers. Now, during the scene at the police station, one of the characters brings up the events of the first film. And based on the opening scene of this movie, we believe that all the characters who were still alive at the end of the first film are dead. But we learn in this scene, however, that Clear is still alive and she's at a psychiatric facility. And I thought they kind of missed a little bit of a surprise opportunity here. Instead of just telling the audience, because we expect Clear to be dead based on the information we learned from the opening scene... They, they could have, instead of just telling us, they could have been kind of given us this sort of surprise reveal later on in the movie. You blew it! And now Kimberly tries to convince everybody to kind of stay and work together because she really believes that death is after them once and for all, but nobody believes her except the cop, Tom. And after this, we get the first kill scene of the character of Evan. And Final Destination 2... I've noticed handles the kill sequences a little bit different than the first film and that they throw a lot of kind of fake outs and false alarms at you that really kind of keep you guessing and I think that because of that little technique it makes the kill sequences a lot better. And so Evan's there in his apartment, he turns the stove on, he puts something in a microwave and then something falls into the garbage disposal and his hand gets stuck. And so we expect something to happen with the garbage disposal that it's going to turn on and shred his hand to pieces. And we see something in the microwave and we expect the microwave to explode and kill him. And then the fire breaks out and we expect that to kill him. Only none of that is what actually kills him. And he actually gets out of his apartment right before it explodes. And so there's kind of all just these little, you know, 
false alarms that go off that you think this is going to be what kills him, but it's not. And this is going to be, but it's not. And then he climbs down the fire escape and he kind of slips and falls and the ladder almost falls on top of him. And we think he keeps getting lucky and avoiding death. And then at the last second, of course, the, the ladder falls and smashes right through his eye. <laughs> And it's just kind of this nice sort of, it keeps you guessing as far as how death is actually going to kill him. And so I just, I like that they do that sort of thing throughout this, the rest of the movie. And about half an hour in, Kimberly goes to the hospital where Clear is. And she gets into her room to talk to her, to try to get her to help them out and, and find out some information and, and all that. And she really wants Clear to help but Clear wants nothing to do with it. But really, that's a scene that just kind of delays some time and takes up some film time because a few minutes later, after Kimberly leaves, Clear decides that she's going to help him out. And so she leaves the hospital and she goes back and finds Kimberly to help them out. Then not too long after this scene, we get our next kill scene. And this is just another pretty fantastic scene. This is the of the younger character named Tim as he's at... The dentist office and again it just throws a bunch of false alarm fake outs at you as the the pigeons start hitting the windows and we think it might have something to do with that the fish tank leaks on an electric outlet and it starts sparking and then something happens and the nitrous oxide that he's on the oxygen gets shut off and so he starts like getting woozy and almost passes out and And then one of the little things from the, the fan above him or whatever drops into his mouth. And then we think that's what's going to do it. And then he escapes out of there totally scot-free. And we're like, oh man, that's interesting. And then of course, just this amazing and fantastic kill where the giant pane of glass falls on top of him and just smashes him into a pancake. It's it, again, it's just a wonderful sort of combination sequence of events where you just think this is going to happen, this is going to happen. No, he's fine. And then just bam, right there, and he just gets smashed. And it's just a great scene. Now we get to about the halfway point where we get Tony Todd's cameo scene where Kimberly Clear and the cop go seek him out because this is the guy who apparently knows all the information and has all the answers about death. And this is another pretty good scene. And Tony Todd, again, just kind of has a really nice presence about him. And this is where I started to feel like the movie kind of started becoming a little more self-aware and involved in kind of its own humor. And that was one of the big things that kind of hinders the first Final Destination for being a lot more entertaining for me is because I felt like they just took the ridiculousness of it all way too seriously. Whereas this movie, the first half, I still felt that a little bit, but as we moved into the second half, there were just some little hints that I kind of felt like the filmmakers were in on the joke. And to me, that made for overall just a much more entertaining watch. And you can just tell in this scene, Tony Todd is just really having fun with this. I like just kind of his little intro. He comes out from this like red glowing room through this smoke and he's wheeling out Evan's body and then shoves it into the incinerator. And, and you can just tell like he finds all this death talk very amusing and he's just, you know, like having a fun time with it. And I, I just get a kick out of this scene. He's just fun to watch. Dead. Yet still. And I think one of the dead giveaways in this scene is that they cut to a shot of Tony Todd ripping out the dude's nipple ring before he shoves him into the incinerator. Just before they die, don't you think? And it was kind of at that point that I was just like, okay, we're, we've clearly kind of made some sort of tonal shift now. They're, they're aware of what's going on. They're aware of how ridiculous this is. And I really just felt kind of a shift more towards humor and, and sort of tongue-in-cheek sort of thing with the rest of the movie. And so they learn from Tony Todd that there's this balance between life and death and that new life can offset death because there was this pregnant woman whose life was saved and somehow her giving birth to a child is going to kind of even out the, the life and death scales. Seems like a bit of a reach, don't you think? 
And then they're like, no, all we have to do is just convince the lady to stay alive so she can have her baby. And he's like, yeah, that should be an easy conversation. So again, we're in sort of humor territory here, which to me is exactly the right tone. And it just makes this whole thing all the more, all the more better, <laughs> all the more entertaining. Now the three of them are able to gather up the remaining survivors and they all go to the cop's house to, to try to formulate this plan that, you know, we need to stick together and work together to, to, to figure this out. And they got to they gotta seek out the pregnant woman to make sure that she has her baby. And again, the movie just does a good job here with sending us fake outs about not knowing when the next kill is going to happen. And there's a scene where a bunch of stuff falls in a closet on one guy and where this gigantic kayak boat swings off from the ceiling and we think somebody's going to get taken out. And so there's just a lot of that that I just find pretty fun. And then we get another really fun kill scene with Nora's kill. And, and Kimberly's been having these premonitions all throughout the, the movie. And this premonition is about this man with hooks who's going to kill Nora. And her and Eugene are in the elevator. And this guy comes in with a bunch of prosthetic limbs. And he's this real creeper. And so they think he's going to somehow kill her. Only she, her, she gets her hair caught on one of the prosthetic limbs. And then her head gets stuck in the elevator. And then she gets crushed and decapitated. And <laughs> It's just, it's so ridiculous, and I love seeing Eugene's reaction to it. It's hilarious. <laughs> so we get a solid decapitation kill, and then Eugene freaks out, and he comes back into the cop's apartment, just goes absolutely bananas, and then threatens to shoot himself. And just his whole performance in this is just, it's just great entertainment, in my opinion. So the remaining survivors drive to go find the pregnant lady who is now in protective police custody. And as they're talking on the way, they find out that there is this connection between them and the characters from the first film. And so some of the reason why they're alive was directly or indirectly involved in the characters from the first film's death. And then we get another awesome kill scene with the characters of Kat and Rory. And there's this huge car crash and... Then this news van backs over some rocks and it punctures gasoline and it starts this fire. And And I love how Cat is sort of inadvertently killed in the car from the jaws of life. And then because of the gasoline that was, was dripping, it creates another massive explosion. And then whoever wrote up Rory's kill should be commended because it, it's so hilarious and ridiculous. It's just wonderful as this section of barbed wire fence flies through the air and slices them up into three sections. It's just wonderful. <laughs> So the pregnant lady ends up going into labor while she's in protective custody. So she's driven to the hospital and then the rest of them try to meet her there at the hospital to make sure that the baby gets delivered. And then we get another shocking kill and Clear gets backdrafted in a gigantic explosion again <laughs> through the hospital, wipes Clear out in a pretty shocking moment. as we lose our only connection now to the first movie. So now, at this point, Kimberly has been having these premonitions all throughout the movie, and it turns out that she's been interpreting them wrong the whole time. And she figures out that she has to more or less kill herself to end the cycle. So she ends up hijacking an ambulance, driving it into a lake, and, and essentially drowns, but she is resuscitated because they're right there at the hospital. And so that sort of ends the whole thing. But of course, they have to set this thing up for one more movie. And so we get one final scene where Kimberly and the cop, the two survivors, are at this cookout. And they find out that one of the people who's at the cookout ended up saving one of the characters earlier and prevented their death. And so... Of course, Death's plan is still alive and well. <laughs> and I can't help but laugh at the final shot because it's it's just great. His mother's there screaming and his 
severed arm lands right on top of her plate at the picnic table and it ends with her just screaming looking at his severed arm and that's it and it's just a lot of fun it's a fun way to end this movie and so overall man i just i really feel like final destination 2 got the tone a whole lot better like this is what the first film should have been and and i'm just i'm glad that they were able to kind of figure that out and i think the kills here are they're just they're bigger they're better there's certainly more explosions in this movie this movie has more explosions than like a, a marvel superhero movie it's it's insane uh but it's a lot of fun and so uh trying to be objective i'm gonna do like a three type grade like i did with the first movie trying to be objective it's probably like a six out of ten as far as entertainment goes it's probably like a seven and a half to eight and if i had to grade the kills i think the kills in this are like pretty top notch i'm gonna go a nine out of ten for the kills in final destination 2 the kill scenes in here i think are just fantastic so again make of that what you will but i think there's quite a bit of fun to be had with final destination 2 i certainly enjoy it and get more entertainment out of it than than from the first film so those are my thoughts like always hit me down below let me know what you guys think of final destination 2 do you like it more or less than the first film let me know. That's all I got for you. If you like videos like this, you know what to do. Hit that red button. I greatly appreciate it. Up next, you guessed it, Final Destination 3. Let's keep on rolling, and I'll see you next time on The Haunted Beard.